Hey guys, so today's model is Agatha Crane from the Mansions of Madness board game by Fantasy Flight. So sit back, relax, enjoy the ride, and hopefully you'll learn something along the way. Cue intro. So here we go. So, as you can see, we've got the uh, Match of the Madness model. I'm starting with a light grey. I'm not going to give um, specific brands. If you want to know, I use Scale 75 uh, to, to do most of this. But um, I don't believe in needing a brand as such. Uh, just aim for the colour that looks right to you. But yeah, as you can see, we're in a nice solid base of the, the light grey. And now we're going through a off white while it's still wet. To sketch out kind of the highlights so i'm aiming for any area that is kind of uh, might catch light if you imagine like a light source coming from above all around so i'm trying to build up that leaving the gray in any darker areas now again while it's still wet even lighter one you'll see that it's kind of mixing straight on the model as i'm i'm moving it around to try and mix in a bit and um, again aiming for even lighter areas so this is uh a technique called sketching so while everything's still wet I'm blending it all together sketching out where I want the highlights to be having a play with the colors to try and figure out learn kind of learn the model and figure out where I want the light to be and where I want my shadows to be and um, you no need to be very careful at this point it's a nice nice play of playing with colors and having a bit of fun and not having to worry too much so yeah, using the light, you can see it's kind of all started to blend a bit, um, which is what I want. And I'm going back over and moving the paint around as, as I want to. Trying to figure out the best places for the highlights. But you can see now that I'm focusing a lot uh, along around the shoulders and such. Spend a little bit more time there. And now I'm actually going back in with a darker, a dark grey into the, the deepest recesses. Again, while everything's still wet, just to build out the shadows now. I've done that, so I want to see in the folds, under the, where it kind of, round the waist, and in the armpits and underneath the arm. And now, obviously, inside. So this is, this is kind of like, I figured out where I want my, my highlights, so now I'm going for my, my shadow. Straight back into the lighter colour again. Just constantly moving the colours backwards and forwards as I want. Being a little bit more careful this time because I actually kind of know where I want to be. So this is um, an off-white kind of ivory colour I'm using. Again you can see mostly focused on the, the upper parts that, that would be the lightest parts if it was a light above your head. I'll, I'll also start to focus in on any folds that are out and the billowing part of the her, uh, lab coat type thingy-majig. I tried to uh, follow the art a bit. So in the in the picture, he's wearing a lab coat and a red undercoat, grey hair, old lady. I guess the cream. See, yep. Yeah focusing in on the billowy bits now, leaving the darkest parts with the shadow in, even for the highest bits. It's still very rough at this stage, you don't have to worry too much, we can always go back and clean up anything, any issues, and we will do that as we go through, constantly moving. So this, this way of kind of sketching style is you tend to move backwards and forwards with the colours, try to find the exact way you want it. Um, being slightly neater each time as opposed to so you can see actually here that, see I'm doing it slightly different brush strokes I know it's very quick I'm going up and down left and right patching to get a bit of fabric texture in um, yeah as I say in the sketching technique you um, kind of move the colors around trying to figure out the best way you want to, to place the light it, uh, it's quite a fun technique to learn Quite a fun way of playing with colours as well. You don't have to worry too much about I've got one layer. 
then I've got to the get the next layer perfect. I've got to glaze the two of them together. I've got to get the next one and glaze that in. This is, I'm going to put a colour on. Possibly while it's still wet, maybe it's dry. Don't know. See what happens when I do the next colour. Is it going to be lighter? Is it going to be dark? Is it going to be a completely different colour? Who knows? But um, yeah, it makes, it makes for good fun. So in this, I tried to show the palette on the left as well, so you can kind of see what I'm going for. I put all my colours down that I thought I was going to need from the start. Just building out those those highlights now. Cleaning up anywhere I, I feel like I've gone over. With the, with the shadow colours. It's, um, this is quite an... There's, there's a lot of models in, in the, the set. I'm going to try and get them all done. This being obviously the first one I've done. First one I've had to play with. Um, one thing I will say, if you're coming from war games, the models in this board game are good. Like, like I do like them. But uh, from a painter's point of view, the details are a little bit muddy. As in, they kind of they're a bit softer than the sharp edges of detail you might be used to on a on miniatures company per se like you take the game's workshop model the the details would be very crisp you'll be able to very simply whereas some of these seem to drift together um okay so what i'm doing here is i've made a bit of a brain wash i'm just putting that over just to help me so i like I say, I'm struggling with the details a bit, so I just needed that wash to go in and see where it settled. Help me with the, the highlight. Uh, yeah, help me to find my highlights and my shadows. Um, here I'm just putting a basic flesh, Caucasian flesh colour in onto the face. Now I'm trying to whack in, while it's still a bit wet, the uh, Indian shadow. It's kind of like a reddy flesh colour to where all the shadows on the face might be again this is very sketchy trying to figure it out i tried to, to figure out the face the the neckline and such like the cheekbones and things and now it's a lot of playing backwards and forwards with the, the flesh colors to build it into an actual flesh tone figure out where i because those, those are quite bold changes so now i'm just softening the changes um granted this technique I will admit works a bit better on say a bust scale as opposed to a 28 mil and not a particularly well defined 28 mil the facial features were uh, almost non-existent <laughs> it felt like when i was painting you can see me move move backwards and forwards a lot it's it's next the next one i might do it in a more structured manner than this one this is me learning how the models were and it's with painting that's the way to do it have a play with each model you try try something new um, in this I, I was trying the uh, to play around with the sketch technique a bit more looks a bit like a joker at the moment <laughs> um, but yeah so next time I might go back to a more structured style I think that might work better on these models uh, than, than this technique it's because of the way the details are um personally i'm still learning the sketch technique hence why why doing it um and i feel like i need a model with more definition easier easier to figure out where the details should be and where the highlights and shadows should be as opposed to a model that's strangely more of an open canvas in a way because it's missing the details like i could define a lot of the face if i was good enough in my sketching um but yeah, I need to I need to learn it and practice more. But yeah, all, all I'm doing effectively is laying a base colour, figuring out where my shadows should be, and then highlighting back up. I'm doing it a bit more while the model's still a bit wet, so they're blending the paints together, I'm trying to help define features as I'm going. I've got my the red lips in and such. Still looks a bit jokery. But we will we will get there. I figured out that eventually that the 
the mice detail was, was lacking. I was missing a black. <laughs> I need to do the eyes. So yeah, you can see me doing the eyes here. So what I've done is actually where the eye is, do a big blob of white, do a line, black line, to make it look, and then basically bring a flesh colour back. So before you go too far, say you do a, before you do like say a wash layer or something like that over the flesh, do big do your base colour skin big circles for white for the eyes black line and then re-highlight like bring back in the base color where the flesh should be and that way you don't have to worry about going over and staying in the tiny little space that there's for the eyes and then you just start highlighting the flesh as you would normally at least that way you've already got the eyes done That's one of the most annoying bits So yeah, the, I know I will admit that the face was a, an interesting challenge on this model. I'm hoping it's different for the others. But an old dude with a cane who I haven't figured out the name of yet. Need to find his card. He's wearing a dapper suit, which I'm going to do next. Here we go. I feel like I'm starting to get there with the face. Some final highlights. Or I, I decided then um, after going at it for a while that it was time to go back and re-highlight some of the, the cloth because I missed some of the what I thought should be lighter after the wash. And then I'm gonna start blocking in the rest of the clothes with a with a base colour so I can actually see how the model looks with colour because sometimes looking at a colour with only like the base spray colors you can't really see it properly until you've got the other colors around it they'll either bring it out to make it pop or you realize it's not bright enough and you need more or you need more definition or more contrast but yeah i decided to get the legs in and now i'm getting the the base red for the dress in block out all the rest of the colors so if you haven't realised, I don't, I don't actually paint this fast. This is like 300 times normal speed or something, um, or three. No, I think, I think three times normal speed. Sorry, not 300. Be very, very quick. The 300 is the setting in my my video editor. Um, 100 is normal speed. <laughs> so yeah, three times normal speed. It actually took me about two hours to paint this which isn't particularly long and if I'd spent a lot longer on it you could obviously get a lot better but you've got to kind of toss up time do you want to spend 30 hours on every model for a board game where the, the actual model isn't 100% great um, or do you want to put a couple of hours in make it look decent and actually have a game that's fully painted <laughs> went back to the face still wasn't happy Remember, it's paint at the end of the day. If you get everything wrong, you can just paint over it. Keep trying, keep going, keep pushing the colours backwards and forwards, bringing out those highlights and shadows. Just shading up the, the legs using the same technique. They're a bit easier to do because of where they are. They're not a face, obviously, being a prominent feature on the model. You want to spend a bit more time making that try and look as good as possible. Everything, so from like the the head and chest area your most important everything going down towards the base gets less important for details so you can kind of get away with doing a little bit less work on say the legs of a model especially if it's just for gaming obviously a display model you'll want to put in 100% on on every part of the model um, yeah so you the, the part of this model that's looking in the angle of it is all pointing to the face and the chest piece so that's where you want to find it spend most of your time and obviously you spend a little bit of time on the on the uh, back as well because you tend to be looking at the back of the model a lot <laughs> that's why I keep going back to the cloak here we are I'm just putting a light grey a slightly a light grey still but, but darker than before um, 
I think it's a little bit of a framey grey as well, cleaning up where I've gone over. Um, to start the grey hair, went for a more slightly brainy grey just because it's hair. You can imagine the hair's going from brain to grey, so tied it up through the reds. If you actually look on my Instagram, I've got a red cloth tutorial, very simple. Don't actually follow it here, but all I've got is works great, a bit more structured than the way I'm trying it here. Like I said, this is this me practicing sketch style as well, which if you look up is uh, very much worth it, worth knowing. I wish I'd learned how to sketch from the start as opposed to you know, the Games Workshop classic way. Just, I have nothing against, it's a very good way of achieving results, but as a, someone who wants to paint better, they like learning the, the value sketch, it's called, way of painting, it is, is worth it. If that's the way you start, it's even better. So I've just literally three, three metal colours here on the buttons and her little thing. So dark, mid and highlight. Didn't even wash it, didn't need to, the details are so small. It's covering a little bit less each time. We've got the shadow there already, no need for a wash. I'm basically lightly dry brushing a lighter grey. Still got a bit of a little bit of browny grey in it. So it's not 100% dry brush because I'm not using a dry dry brush um, specific brush. Just using a normal brush, very lightly catching the edges. Probably not the best for, for maintenance of the brush, to be honest. This um, watch, I, I'm learning from a master painter, shall we say, who is absolutely brutal on his brushes. <laughs> it's scary to watch as he breaks the tip to get details and then merges it back into a point. I'm like, painful to watch every time. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> I still, still respect my brush. So we're coming up to the end here, just adding in the last details on the face, making it look a little less like Alan Partridge and a little more like an old lady. Like I said, I spent most of my time on the face of the model. We've got a nice simple red dress, we've got the buttons, and we've got a nice white cloak. That's a very serviceable model for the board game. Um, just getting in a little bit of white for the fingernails. Could do it, and I could have done a nice red. But she's, she's an old professor. Maybe she doesn't care anymore. I also realise I've forgotten the shoes at some point. Here we go, get some brown on the shoes. Could spend time highlighting these up, but again. I'm not going to do the bases yet. The bases are going to be a whole feature by themselves. Um, once I figure out, once I look at the board pieces more and figure out how I want to do the bases to match the board, I will do a whole video on basing all the models. But yes, here we go, and that is fully done. Well, guys, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed that, please hit the subscribe button down the bottom. Um, maybe give it a like and share it around. And hopefully see you soon for more.